this four-part series on global population aging aims to introduce you to the concept of population aging and its impact on health care and in particular emergency medical care. Our first lecture will provide an overview of global aging while the second and the third lectures talk about aging in the developing and developed worlds respectively while the final lecture will focus on the economic impact of global aging. At the end of this lecture you will be able to define aging and old age using a variety of parameters including chronological age, biological age and biopsychosocial models. You will be able to describe the overall picture of aging globally, discuss the factors that have led to population aging and discuss the future implications of population aging. So what is old age? Well in fact it's actually quite difficult to define because different experts have used different definitions depending on their area of focus or their area of expertise. Chronological age is probably the simplest to understand since it entails putting an age, a number, on the age that we think of as old age. But it's really interesting to see how that has changed with time. At one point, anyone over the age of 55 was considered an older person. This then moved to 60 and in many developed countries it has now moved to 65. And that ties in with this idea of life expectancy. So 50 years ago or more, um, not many people lived beyond 60 or 65 and therefore the idea that somebody 55 years old was old was reasonable. Of course these days the majority of us will live past our 55th birthday into the 60s and often well into the 70s and 80s. Therefore we have had to revise our ideas of what old age is in keeping with the changing life expectancy globally. We also need to consider biological aging and anybody who works in healthcare will understand this. <coughs> um, we will see older people who are really fit and healthy and we would consider their biological age to be much less than their physical age. However, we will have younger people who mostly because of um, <coughs> uncontrolled comorbidities or um, poor lifestyle choices have a biological age which is far greater than their chronological age. Less commonly in health do we look at the psychosocial and economic factors that influence our impression of age and old age but these do play a part when we are thinking about the social and sociological implications of aging. For example, um, what is considered an older person in populations with a low life expectancy such as in areas of Africa or Southeast Asia um, may be different because of their role in society and their place in society which also defines what we think of as an old person. Is the world aging? Well I think the next three graphics will prove the point. This is what the world looked like in 2000. The darkness of the color of each country in the map gives us an idea of the percentage of people aged 60 plus and over. As you can see in 2000, most of this was concentrated in North America, Europe and Australia. Let's move over to 2015. Firstly, you notice everything is getting darker, which means a greater percentage of the population in all countries seems to be 60 and over. But on top of that, take a look at parts of Southeast Asia 
and Central and South America, where the colors are darkening as well. Now let's fast forward to 2050, a predicted map of course. Again, our North American and European countries have got even darker. But look at China. Look at parts of South America um, and Southeast Asia. So we see that aging is a global phenomenon that is affecting all countries of the world at different rates. And this has real implications on health and healthcare policy. What actually causes a population to age? <coughs> Most of us just think it means that people are getting older. But it's a little more complicated than that. And in fact, in most countries with increased affluence, the first thing that happens is a drop in fertility rates. So without any change in the upper end of the scale in how long people live, if we produce less babies and have less younger children, the average age of the population increases. Beyond that, again with affluence and improved health care, we move on to changes in life expectancy. And again, this may not be what you think. When we think about population aging, often we think about individuals living to a very old age. And that is not the first thing that happens. The first thing that happens is that more people live to that defined old age. So in other words, in a developing country, maybe only 5% of the population may live beyond 60. Whereas in a developed country, 25% of the population can easily live beyond that age. And you can see how that changes the mean population age. And finally, there's the impact of migration. In the second and third talks, we will talk a lot more about the impact of migration on aging. I'll just leave it there for now. Let's think about what's going to happen in the future. Firstly, this graph shows us clearly that the percentage of the population 60 or over is predicted to rise steadily over the next few years. And although there is signs that this will plateau eventually, that is not going to be happening anytime soon. By 2050, probably about 25% of the global population will be 60 and over. Um, and as you can see, the percentage of the population in the younger age group is going to decline over the same time period. Before we end, I just want to look a little bit at what we call the older soul, people 80 years and over across the world. As you can see, the general trend for people 60 and over and 80 and over is the same with increasing proportions throughout the world. Um, but there's a fairly exponential growth in both groups and there are some places that are growing faster than others, particularly Asia <coughs> and to a lesser extent Latin America. Again, this has real implications on the economics and healthcare provision in those regions. This is another graph showing the growth of that proportion of the population 80 years and over um, uh, and demonstrating that North America, Europe and Oceania are places that are going to lead this. Now we'll talk in another talk about something called frailty which is linked to increasing age and we'll see the implications of this rise in the oldest old population in terms of again healthcare provision and to, a less, to, to an equal extent, economics. If you have any questions or comments about this short lecture, you can post it on our chat or WhatsApp group. Um, in summary, global aging is a well-recognized phenomenon and population aging has significant social, economic and health related implications. But population aging also provides opportunities, but this needs recognition and planning. 
our next two talks will concentrate on the developed and developing regions of the world.